It's mid-November in eastern Canada and it's getting really cold out. It probably snow any day now. So I'm getting pretty desperate to get my firewood done up over here. This video is going to be on firewood processing. Uh, mostly the last little while we've been really focused on our block house and trying to get that project done for the YouTube channel and for winter time and part of the push to have that done was so that the driveway had something blocking it so that nobody could come down here pull their truck in at night and load all this firewood on and go. Now that sounds a little bit ridiculous given that this firewood's probably only worth a few hundred dollars Canadian but when you see the amount of effort that goes into processing all of this you'd understand why you don't want to see it pissed away. Most of this firewood would have been cut last year and in the spring we took enough of it home to get me through this winter but we're now a year ahead on our cutting and this is what was still left over from last year. I'm hoping so long as I get it off the ground and piled it'll dry and it'll still be good for me for next winter to burn. But if I don't get through this pile and it snows on it it's just going to get worse and worse and if it sits there on the ground for another winter it's going to be done for because uh, I would say a good 80% of my firewood is birch and we'll talk about that a little bit more as the video goes on but uh, birch especially rots rather relatively quickly and you really have to try to get this stuff done. So with that said I'm going to hit the chainsaw we're going to start junking our logs into links and then I'll show you the rest of the process from there. I've got other videos on the channel of our selecting logs cutting them down and hauling them out on our logging trailer. We did a lot this year using our three-wheeler. When I bring my logs here, I still put runners down underneath the pile to keep everything up off the ground and allow some airflow through. And you're going to have to look out, puppy. You gotta keep moving the pieces that you cut out of your way so that your chainsaw blade doesn't hit them and knock them back at you. This is what a healthy birch looks like. Nice uniform light color across the whole thing. Here's a look at an unhealthy log. One of the first indicators are these mushrooms growing on it. Anytime you see that you know your birch is already dying. And here this gives you a good look at the spongy material that you end up when your log is rotten. So after junking a bunch of wood, your splitting comes next. This has become quite time consuming this year because I have to try to cut as much of this birch as possible. Now when you cut your logs down into links for your wood stove, the wood now has two ends that it can breathe through here and here and allow moisture to come out. But birch bark is waterproof and this is why it was used by natives for canoes traditionally uh, and so what happens I believe is that the bark around the log prevents moisture from escaping and causes it to rot if you know the bark is on so if you could split your piece now you've got uh, all of this area for your moisture to come out of and that way these pieces of birch won't rot on me, I think, if they're piled off the ground and allowed to breathe and stay dry. A lot of the stuff I have is pretty small diameter. I had someone ask about that on the channel and it has to do with my forestry work and what it is that we're thinning on our first pass or two through any block of woods. 
it tends to be all of the small stuff that are in clumps and eventually as I go back through my woods I'm going to get larger and larger diameter until you you know it gets pretty big to split the last bunch of years I've been able to get away with an axe but in future years as my tree diameter gets larger because there's fewer trees in the forest less crowding and therefore trees are allowed to fill out more I may end up having to get a wood splitter at some point in time some of these get pretty stubborn especially if there's a twist or something in the wood a knot oh, I hate this small diameter stuff gotta try to balance it on the block you waste more time doing that than doing anything else Okay, and the last stage of this is piling your wood. I can't split stuff of that small a diameter. It's hard to even get it to stand up on the splitting block, let alone get your ax down through it. So this stuff just gets piled on in the middle of my piles. Anything that I have that's fairly uniform, as in uh, nice and flat the whole way across, I'll use it on my end posts to build these up. And these here are done just like a log cabin, two this way, two that way, and so on. And it gives the end of your pile stability so that it doesn't just fall over. And uh, then I can just make tier after tier of firewood. Uh, also, I always make sure my firewood is piled on runners. So you might be able to see there's a small log underneath these pieces here. I would have liked to have used a larger log to get more airflow under, but I just grabbing whatever garbage wood I have around here and putting it down to put my firewood out along it. And then the other thing is you have to get your pieces here on the end in even height. And those two there look like pretty good so that the next two will come on top like that. As I'm piling my wood, I put all my birch together and all my maple together. Those are the two species that I primarily am able to harvest here in my forest for firewood. The uh, maple lasts a lot longer and it's just better firewood all around. And so I try to keep that separate so that as soon as I start burning firewood next winter, I'll start burning my birch. And once I burn through all of that, then I can go to my maple, which I know is going to last longer. Also, if I go to sell some firewood, I'd rather sell this birch. So we'll end our video there. It's going to be a quick one today. Just wanted to go over a little bit about how you go about processing your firewood. For anybody who's looking to get into this type of thing, it is a lot of work. And uh, I could work overtime at my regular job, you know, in a weekend and make enough money to buy three quarter of wood, I'm sure, uh, to burn for the winter. But uh, I have a, a goal here on this piece of land to not waste anything and so anything that I cut down and thin from my forest I feel obligated to take the time to process it and pile it up and use it for my firewood. I do get free heating every winter and um, this way nothing here on the land goes to waste.